Hi, I'm Rob and it's Guild Wars War 3 Brown Day. Today I'm up against Vendetta and Bonaza is the first opponent. And a good old Skeleton Key team. What this does, they're going to use Greed. That starts with full mana. Cedric starts with half mana, but still pretty useful as well. And gains 100% gold from the battle. Cannot be targeted as a charm. Pretty handy. Basically, you're going to use these things to uh, boost up the damage from their skeleton key. So the skeleton key is a thief class. Starts with 50% mana. That's pretty cool. Greed starts fully empowered. And Cedric starts with half mana. So it would be nice to actually mana drain them if I can. So I'm not going to go for this team. I'm going to go for something a little bit different. I am going to try this team with the new Mythic Trooper Tourmaline. I do really like this. Uh, with Charles Adoni doing damage to an enemy, then creating a lot of brown gems. We've got three constructs on this team and not four, but we're still going to create 12 brown gems total. So that is still a really high chance of getting an extra turn from that. And every four match we get from that is going to create a good gargoyle gem when matching four or more gems which when we choose, we can explode those and collect those with Xernabog, who starts with a Dust Storm, which is brown, and then it's going to create brown and then explode those gems. So we're going to be collecting all those Gargoyle gems. Do you have to be wary that the Egg Thief can also become the Gargoyle Gem Thief if we, they get to cast instead? Because if they destroy those gems, boosted by their gold, they can actually steal our Gargoyle Gems, which we don't really want. But um, the idea is we get charged nice and quick and use a Tourmaline to do damage to all, which affects their stealthy opponent as well, which is where it's really useful too, as well as drain lots of their mana. All right, so this is the team I'm going to use. I'm going to leave this weapon in there. Um, it is there just because of the cleanse ordinarily, but basically it still does a decent damage. And on the, it's basically like a, um, a security thing, really. If they do manage to steal our Gargoyle Gems, if we miss our turn, then, don't know. I want that there, just in case. It does good damage. It probably won't need it, but hey, let's leave it there anyway. In Construct class, going for Serendipity, Well-Read, Anti-Magic Sphere, Tactician, Rock Solid, Stone Mastery. That one's really, really important. And Fortitude. Just to explain why uh, Stone Mastery is really important and that is because we are in the banner of the eagle plus two brown plus one yellow minus one purple not too worried about Zernabog's actual spell we'll get plenty of brown anyway but the reason why that plus one brown from the champion talents is really really important is with Charles only getting a 50 percent start in the manner because all constructs get a 50 percent start means she's got six out of her required 12. If we clicked a normal brown match, just a normal brown match, no mana surge, we're going to be ready to go because we get plus two from the banner as well. And that extra one from the champion talents means a single brown match and we are ready to go with a charter Donny. So let's, um, so let's go. All we need is brown to get going. Well, we do have some brown, so that's nice. Well, we didn't, but it was there and then... <laughs> The single thing exploded, which actually ruined our brown. So we, it was there, and then the game decided it wasn't. Lovely. But if we get a mana surge on yellow, it's the same deal. We'll still get ready to go. And we did get that many mana surge, so we're good like that. Right, we can do a four match. First gargoyle gem has appeared. It's quite a lot of brown there, so we should have a reasonable chance of getting a four match from this. And we did. So another Gargoyle Gem has appeared. All we need to do is get Tourmaline ready to rock and roll and we can drain their mana. So they've got 14 out of their 16. They've got 9 out of 15. They've got 4 out of 10 there. But with the uh, boost of plus 9 on this, we're currently draining uh, 13 of their mana. So we're very nearly taking away all their mana already, which is really cool. Now, this is where you have to make a decision on this kind of game because... You can continue doing damage with a Chalcedony. She is going to take out Greed immediately, which is probably a good idea. You can even do it with um, a Tourmaline. You do hand the turn back to them, but they're basically going to have no mana. 
So we'll do that. I should have clicked that four match first. That was slightly clumsy. And let's uh, do this again. Let's start hitting their hero. I mean their um, egg thief. Total control. See, I was pretty much, from what I've seen so far, the only person that does Gems of War videos to really, really like Tormaline. All I've been hearing is about how bad it is. Well, sorry, but in that means you're using the wrong team or using it against the wrong teams because, again, it's been really useful here. We've not given the team, their opposition, a single chance to get going in this game. And we've done it by basically draining their mana and causing damage to all, which affects their stealthy troop as well with Tormaline. So, yeah, I do actually love it. Let's um, take them out as well. So now they are completely non-stealthy. Don't need to drain their mana. We can just uh, finish them off. Be nice to do it with a skull match. But um, let's do it with a charter Donny. But yeah, control the game. Basically didn't give them a chance because of the apparently useless, rubbish, bottom tier troop Tourmaline. What nonsense. Utterly, 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 utterly. I don't know. Anyway, everyone's got their own opinion. It's fair enough. Anyway, 3,273 Guild Wars points. Right, battle two is against Ragnar 15. Flamifer, Thrall, Zulgoth, Lamashtu. This can work very fast, this team, if it gets going. Uh, particularly dangerous in a Sunspear class. No doubt they're going to have the triple uh, damage to burning so they've got root trap at the beginning so we can't do any damage from skulls we're going to be frozen on somebody as well and there it is fire blade deal a triple a skull damage to burning enemies so that's going to charge up and do damage as well the hope for this is that they use lamashtu which starts with full mana and converts yellow to purple charges up their Thrall and gives extra to Zulgoth. Thrall then destroys a load of gems, charging up Zulgoth, which then kills someone, burns everybody, and then that does triple skull damage when all those skulls that Zulgoth throws down hits our team. So that can be particularly devastating, so we do have to be wary of that. Um, could go with this team. If we get going and drain their mana, that would potentially work. But um, anything with freeze in it, just double check that had freeze. Yep, snap freeze. This um, team relies on looping elements, so we're not going to use that for this team. We're going to go back to a standard type team that does a true damage. Just want to check on their Zulgoth life. 118 and Lamashtu has 110. Right, so I can with the Grey King, because he destroys all gems of a chosen colour, all enemies of that colour take true damage. It's quite handy that these two are in last place and both use red. These both use yellow and these both use purple. So I can target these last two on red with the Grey King if I wanted to, but let's check their life again. 110, 118. If I now do more than 118 with these two combined, I've got to cast these once each and that will be the end of them. So I do 56 and 66. Right, that's enough. Right, I'm going to roll with this then. Okay. In Titan class for this, using Impact, Counter-Attack, Stone Circle, Storm Aura, Rock Solid, Stone Mastery, and Fortitude. And I've got two medals of Nysha on and one Orpheus. Right, so uh, let's just show the banner ever so briefly. Plus two brown, plus one purple, minus one yellow. Ghost Queen is really good in this team. Gives our Grey King a nice 50% start. So Daughter of Ice starts fully empowered. And if we get red to blue, we will absolutely do that. All right. To battle. All. So we are frozen on the Grey King, who just does use blue so that's slightly irritating red to blue do we have that at all we do we had a four match anyway but um we're absolutely going to be handing the turn back to them so let's see what this does yellow to purple 
a small amount of value for them there. Only if they get another lot of yellow drop down next to that purple there will they get a four match from that. So that would be... It'd feel really hard done by if that actually happened, let's, let's be honest. So I might take this anyway. No point doing this yet. Don't get an awful lot from it. Well, we could get a Mana Surge, you see. You can never get a Mana Surge from a 4 match and with Frozen, so it's only going to be 4. This is still slightly tempting to do this. If we get a Surge on it, our Grey King is going to be ready to rock and roll. And we're not going to change the board that much, which is kind of what we want. So I will do that. And we did get a surge, so that's quite handy. Do you not get him? Oh, Struth, right. Phew. Now, I think we're going to have to... Um, red or purple? I think we'll do purple. Just about got away with that. Life and death is entangled still, but we're not too bothered about that. Because I want to... Wipe out their bottom two if I can, nice and quick. Oh, they're getting charged again rather fast. Must have missed something near the beginning because um, they gained... They had more life than I thought they had. I thought uh, I could kill them with life and death. Oh no, that's why, because I didn't, um, didn't target the bottom one, did I? No, I targeted purple. That was a bit silly. So early in the morning, I always do these funny little quirky mistakes on Guild Wars in the morning I can get a red format from this not that I use red but may generate some extra mana from somewhere which I kind of need it's also a barrier that is very annoying I've got a barrier too so I kind of wouldn't mind skull baiting them somehow trying to Tempt them into taking a skull hit rather than mana, which the AI does tend to like to do. So I think I will do that. I didn't really want to give them that, but hey-ho. Right, if I cast this now, yes, I kill their bottom troop. Bazool is very near to being charged. Right, she's going to be ready really soon. If I get rid of Zool's barrier, when I cast that, right, we should have enough turns. There's not enough purple there right now to get their thrall charged. They can get there's no uh, they can get yellow for their um, weapon, I suppose. Right, hang on, let's calculate this. One turn to get my ghost queen charged. They go next. If they get blue, they could get their Zool up. Hmm. If they take yellow, they could get their Flamifer up, but that's not particularly dangerous. Right, it's kind of the same deal. If I cast Life and Death now, take away their barrier, kill the bottom troop, rely on them doing whatever they do because I can't do both things at the same time. I think I'm just thinking out loud now and it may be not making any sense. I have no idea. But I am blessed, so it's good. Um... I want to tempt them into taking mana. If they take blue, could be in a bit of trouble. But either way... Right, okay. Need to go screen up, basically. Okay. 
Not too shabby. I can now cast Life and Death. Now cast the Ghost Queen. Again, just in time on their <laughs> Zulgoth. Two times in a row. So, yeah. Worked out in the end. But this is the stuff you have to figure out sometimes. Ghost Queen's nearly ready again. So, Thrall is in range of her. So, I'm tempted to think about getting her charged up. No brown, no purple for my life and death. There's no... Oh, I could stop them taking that. It's not too bad now, basically, because um, the idea of creating those red gems was for Zulgoth. So I'm not overly concerned about that. And if they take that yellow will give me a skull hit on them anyway so actually I can take away the option by taking this blue yeah I'm gonna do that oh it, okay it made it worse <laughs> whatever oh. gotta look at these things not just presume we're nearly ready to go on that they created a load of red for no particular reason anymore so we it should be okay now. This is going to give me blue as well. Life and death is still two turns away from being charged, so I should really try and get my ghost queen up. That was handy. Uh, may as well get this then. No, not much choice. Ugh. Right, we are ready next turn. Let's uh, give him a, a bash, I suppose. Don't really want a lose a troop if I can avoid it. Oh, wow. Look at that. I couldn't have worked out <laughs> any better at all. Holy guacamole. Are you done? Are you happy with that? All right. Frozen on blue. Gonna give him a skull hit after. They're not frozen on anything, so if I don't take that, they're gonna get that and hit me anyway. So I may as well get the blue. Um, yeah, no real choice there. Oh, they got another extra turn out of it. It's truth. Can it be any kinder? To the opposition. Alright, how about me getting some fortunate, convenient works in every way that I wanted gem drops here right I could do with getting this like that I'm probably gonna get their flammifer up again so this is a little bit of squeaky bum time this is not a done deal in any way shape or form because Thrall is gonna cast there's not a huge amount of yellow and brown there though so but it still managed to work out for him oh look God set me up on this game Struth we're gonna lose we're going to lose, probably, because the game decided everything should be in their favour. No, it wasn't entirely in their favour, but um, a couple of moves certainly did work out right. We can still life. I think we have to do this. This is interesting, because he's got re Reflect. Well, I have to do this. I have to destroy Thrall. Can't give him a chance to get Flammifer up again. I have to take this next skull hit on the chin. 
now we've got a very similar amount of life now, apart from I'm burning. And I am going to do some damage to them with this. Serious squeaky bomb time. They've got loads of yellow for their weapon. I've got no green, no brown. So don't offer me a purple. I need to take away their yellow, basically. But they've still got one over there. So, but there's a slim chance if I take this, you can get a green from there. So that is what you have to roll with. Just check there's no other way of dropping a green down onto something else. Well, this was a lot more shady than I imagined it was going to be. Should have gone with my cheap Charleston team. The cheesy one that just gets loads of turns. Well, we've got an extra turn, so that's not all bad. I suppose we can take away the yellow now that they need. Oh, it's tight. Tighter than a gnat's chuff. Oh, might as well do that. Because they're going to do it otherwise. That's going to give us uh, some green we need. But I'd rather take the brown because they need that too. Just double check it's not going to give them any skull alignment. Nope, because it's going to be there and there. And a squeaky bum win. Flipping serious squeaky bum time. Right, that was... I underestimated that team slightly, I have to admit. Once I thought I got once I got rid of Zool, I thought that was gonna be kind of plain sailing, but that Flamifer really really surprised me. They got some a couple of fortunate things, particularly that big red surge which then created a gap in the middle which dropped down to four match skull hit at the same time. But um those things happen and in Guild Wars, some things happen in Gems of War, and that's what makes it fun. One thousand one hundred and seventy four points there. Right, battle threes against Capricorn2968. Umanath, Divinish, Bala, Rope Dart, Moon Rabbit. This is quite dangerous. Moon Rabbit starts with full mana, converts blue to yellow, and then gives life to all other allies. And Divinish, Bala gives all divine allies a 40% start, as well as transforming Retta Skulls and green to yellow and enchanting. Rope Dart is... Great weapon, eliminates all, arm, all armor, deals damage, pulls them to the front, and normally has an extra turn. And Umaneth will start with that 40% because it's divine, deals damage, and if they die, creates a load of skulls. So, uh, this is potential, could use this same team again, but. Um, doesn't rely on extra turns but I'm going to try a little experiment here I may completely crash and burn on this but I might try not that one not that one that was a bit random I give I give this a go this is the full cheese a Charles Donny team all constructs where you can just loop and loop and loop creating a brown doing damage with Charles Donny repeating the process but this is a dangerous team. The idea is to try and win, even if it's with a triple cheese team in a dairy relief factory with extra EDAM on top. But um, we are frozen from the start, I presume. Yes, snap freeze. Right, so this, you know, freeze does mess up the Charles Donny looping teams. So what I'm going to do for this is make sure I am going to change my medals gonna go full orpheus on this in the hope that we get cleansed nice and fast don't know if i have a full orpheus set set up no i don't so we can do that now all right so a full orpheus we got a three separate 10 percent chances to get recovered from this now so hopefully that'll happen sooner rather than later if not, we could be in some pain. This is a risk. I'm quite happy to admit this is a risk. But I like a risk. Can't remember what team it was. Was it three? Yeah. So basically, if we can get our Curse Breaker Hammer up quick enough with Charles Donnie, it may take a couple of turns if she doesn't get cleansed. 
we can use that to get cleansed and deal a similar damage. So that is the theory. Full Orpheus as well gives us a good chance to get cleansed. Plus two brown. What's on that banner for? What is going on? Must have been playing around with certain teams, experimenting. Having a look at various options. Don't really care about Xenobog's spell. That's there for the, um, the plus two brown, plus one yellow on this. There we go. There's the one. All right. I'm just going to press it. I'm going for it. Hopefully we'll get lucky with the Orpheus at the beginning. Didn't happen right away. And no brown either. Thank you very much. But we do have that. Um, right. Now they're going to do blue to yellow. Well, I was going to take this yellow anyway. They do have a little bit of value this side, but I can only take it from one area at once. If I get a mana surge, I will at least get... <laughs> uh, will at least get ready to go, I was going to say, but it turns out. All right, it's better to get yellow now to leave more brown on the board for Charles Sadoni, who has now been cleansed. So at last... At least now we can um, rock and roll. Who should we pick on first? Um, don't like Rope Dart. Don't like them. Don't like uh, Don't like anyone really in this team. But um, okay, we're off to the races. The full cheese, the triple pizza, can hopefully begin. Just doing damage while creating tons of brown, which creates extra turns. We'll take out that Rope Dart. can do some extra damage with that sort of thing as well. Let's just get rid of Ishbala. It's the full cheese treatment. There's no lack of cheese on this. That last match was too shady by half. See you, Ishi. It's been nice knowing you. But your dancing days are done in this particular match so yeah brown days have changed slightly brown was usually the worst day because it's very hard to get a cleanse but with Charles on in particular and the curse breaker hammer or the um uh, there's another one i forget what it's called now there's another brown weapon which basically um does a cleanse as well I'll throw it in the comments if you remember what it is but that does a cleanse as well so it is much easier to get a cleanse now on a brown day. Anyway, 1,506 Guild Wars points of total cheesiness. But I don't care. All right, battle four is against Miss Dinis. All right, same again. Okay. Well, it worked last time. So let's um, hopefully you have the same result. More cheese, please. And the Orpheus has kicked in right away, which is absolutely superb. We will definitely take that. And party. No point checking that really, because we're about to cast a Charles Sadoni anyway. Uh, who should we pick on first? Should we pick on there, Rabbit? Probably no need to, because it does give life. Actually, yeah, we'll pick on the Rabbit first, because... If they have more life, it basically means it takes longer to beat them up. Full cheese in full swing. Bye bye, rabbit. You've done your last hop. See you, uh, Ubernath. Probably should be doing um, rope dart next rather than Ishii. To be fair. Is this going to be a no turn win? It happens quite often with Charles Sadoni. Cheesy as hell, but who cares? It's Guild Wars. You're there to win. 
sometimes it can take a lot of turns with the Charleston team like this, obviously, because of the way you use an action every single time you do that damage. But with a few lucky Scarlet Drops as well, can make it surprisingly fast sometimes. So 1,635 points that time. And the last battle against the Paragon is Tethys. Null, Cockatrice, Doomed Runestones, and Gimlet Stormbrew. Gimlet starts with full of mana, transforms green to brown. And Null does extra damage versus brown opponents, which is obviously going to be pretty powerful. Does triple damage. They know we're going to be using brown, so that is dangerous. Does extra skull damage too. Cockatrice entangles, drains mana, and creates brown gems. Can be annoying, that one. That's actually quite a decent troop. And Doomed Runestones gives life and mana. So, all right. So I'm just going to roll with the same cheese-tastic team here, I think. Yeah, and we don't even start Frozen. So, happy days. And we can use the weapon to cleanse ourselves if we need it. No brown at the start for us. Go look out for their green to brown. But there's not much green there either, so they've not got a fantastic start either. But I will take the yellow, see if I can get a mana surge, which will mean Charles Adoni is ready to go, and we are ready to go. They've created some brown for us. It's like, what a friendly bunch. Thank you very much. Right, I need to pick on this top opponent first. Dangerous with that extra damage they do. Oh, I'll tell you what I did do, didn't do. Made a mistake here. So you've got to check every single game in Guild Wars. It's so easy to do. I should have put my Nysha's back on. Because I'm still in full Orpheus mode. Still got full Orpheus mode on my medals. And I didn't actually need them for this one. So basically I'm missing out on 8 damage per cast with Charles Donny at the moment. Because I didn't switch back to my two Nysha medals. That actually makes a difference. I will take this, this one, because the more brown that appear, if we get any brown with that, we're going to benefit a child to Donny. Uh, let's get rid of the annoying cockatrice first. Ooh, I've got a few extra turns. Cheeky! See, child to Donny doesn't loop forever. I'd say when you've got her and a team of four constructs like this then it's going to loop up probably 19 times out of 20 it will go wrong now and again it has to but overall it is a super cheesy way to win games but about a time something went in our favor on a brown day it's been hard work on brown day for a long time and this is a nice easy way to get some wins Right, well, it's another Everybody's Dead Day. The third Everybody's Dead Day in a row. 5-0, 5-0, 5-0. Things got particularly hairy at one stage today. Down to the last troop, and it was quite exciting, to be honest. But there we go, 1,727 Guild Wars points. Many of them cheesy. But is this the face of concern? No, it isn't. I'm here to win. All right, and let's take a look at the total score 9,315 is not so hot, but I had a couple of games. That particular one where I lost three troops. But that can happen. But we got through and it was a 5-0 day. But anyway, there's the video. There's the teams. Um, if you enjoyed the video, comment in the comments section. Tell your dog cat budgerigar cheese sandwich because it was all about the cheese today. Even tell your cheesy pasta dish you're going to knock up later on maybe at the weekend. It's all good. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll catch you again later. Bye for now.